low-tech offline thing you could ever have and show you how I grew that uh, to a six-figure business with just four rooms using the internet and online tools. So the first principle of online marketing when you take your business online is you must know who you're talking to. You must have somebody who can put their hand up and say yes that's me. So if you think about um, who you serve, what you do for them, what is the outcome that you produce uh, that, that they get from working with you then you'll have a good idea of who your customer avatar is, which is, is called a customer avatar in internet language. So being very specific is the first principle of online marketing. It's no good saying, well, I help this person and I help that person and I can help everybody, really. It's no good. It won't work online. So that, the first thing there is to have your ideal person. So for us, it was an ideal guest. So for me, I took a look at ourselves and what we did and what we had to offer and how could I stand out from the 300 other B&Bs in the Champagne region of France and be different? So we, would, we had been in the wine business for a, a combined 30 odd years, me and my husband. We knew a lot about Champagne, he'd worked for Mighty Chandon. Um, we knew a lot about uh, Champagne, we spoke English and we spoke French. So we positioned ourselves online as the, the go-to people, the go-to B&B for international people who want to discover the hidden gems of Champagne. That meant there was no French people invited. It was only international guests. Not because I don't like French, but we can't add any value to them. We add more value to the international guests. Okay, do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. right. So be very specific on who you're going to serve when you go online. So then, once we knew who we wanted to attract, the customers that we wanted to attract, I then set up a website. So the website used language and imagery that this person here, this international person who wanted to discover the hidden gems of champagne, could relate to. So when you think of your website, who hasn't, who hasn't got a website? Okay, so if, when you think about your website, so most people have, your website is not just a brochure, it's a sales tool. So in terms of me and my B&B, um, I had um, an online booking system where people could book a room and pay a deposit online without me being there. So I would wake up in the morning, I would open my email, there'd be, there'd be an email from the booking system saying this person has booked a room, and there'd be, there'd be an email from my payment system, so this person has paid some money. So I was making money while I was sleeping. Who'd like some of that? <laughs> so have you got a calendar, an online calendar on your website where people can book a consultation with you? or can, uh, can reach you when you're not there to avoid the email backwards and forwards, the toing and froing. You need an automated um, calendar system so that people can, can reach you when you're not there. Okay? Um, the other thing that I did with my website is I put video on it. Who's got video on their front page? Yay, yay. Video is huge these days. When I started doing this, uh, I started this in 2010, seven years ago. Uh, video wasn't so popular, but now it's really, really important to have a video on the homepage of your website with a specific purpose. So once I've got the website, um, I then thought about what else I can sell to these people. So um, people who, customers who bought once from you will be wanting to buy a, something else from you. So think about what else you can offer your clients. It's, everyone focuses on the first sale, but that's the hardest sale. The easiest sale is the next sale. So think about what other products and services you could offer your clients once they bought something from you because they trust you now. So I developed um, a series of uh, products and services that I upsold to my guests before they arrived. So I was using an automated um, uh, an automation tool that would send them out uh, emails asking them if they wanted dinner, if they wanted a champagne tour, um, what else that, what else we could do for them. And the, the way that I came up with those extra products and services was that I did a survey. I surveyed my clients to ask them what needs weren't we filling. So that's something that you can do. Send out a survey to your clients. What needs aren't I filling? Aren't we filling? What else would you like? And from that they told us that they wanted to uh, meet the small champagne producers because anybody can walk into Berkeley or Moitichandon on their own. You don't need an appointment. 
but no, uh, but no one can walk into a small British champagne producer and meet the family without an appointment. And of course, we could offer that service. So think about you know how, what else you can offer that no one else can. The, the contacts that you have, the network that you have, the open doors, that, the doors that you can open for people, and offer that in an automated sequence. So then they came to my my they came to my B and B, and I gave them my amazing service, of course. So when you give them your amazing service, um, you always want to be thinking about um, how am I onboarding clients? Do I have an automated process for onboarding clients? So in terms of my guests, I was onboarding them by offering, offering them more products and services and warming them up so that when they arrived at my premises, at my B&B, they, they felt really good about me. They kind of knew me, really. They see me on video. They trusted me. They were, they were ready to, you know, to have the experience that I was going to offer. So think about your onboarding process. Have you got that down? Um, can you automate it so that as soon as a client books a session with you or books a photography session or, or becomes a, um, a, an accountancy client, you know, what is your onboarding process and how can you automate that so that you're not recreating the wheel every time? Um, I also had a shop at my property, so I was selling, upselling them as soon as they booked and then I had a, like a, an on-site shop, shop as well, so we were selling um, beauty products made from the grape skins and the pips, because this is like a byproduct of the champagne. Um, we were selling books. My husband's written a book. I've written two books. Uh, we were selling them both digital on Amazon through CreateSpace, which is a really easy way to create a book. Is to uh, publish a book is to do it via CreateSpace on Amazon. It's very easy. Content creation um, that you can sell online without you having to, without too much overhead up front. Um, content is really king online. Content is everything online, in fact. It can do very, um, uh, very many things for you. Uh, Google loves content. So whenever you create a blog post or a, or a piece of content or a new web page and you optimize it for the keywords that your people are searching for, then Google will spot you. Because otherwise your website will look dead. So you need to be adding uh, uh, content all the time and optimizing it for your keywords, for what your people are searching on. Um, so then because I'd done all this, because I'd you know, built a relationship and they bought lots of things from me, um, and I had increased their customer spend, which is your goal, to e increase your customer spend rather than going out and getting new clients all the time. You need to increase your customer spend, which is easier. Of course, they wrote me a great review on TripAdvisor which is the place where, in the hospitality industry, that's where you collect your testimonials. So are you collecting testimonials? Have you got them over your, or on your website? Are you using them to attract more clients? Sprinkle them around, brag about yourself. <coughs> brag about what people are saying, because what other people say about you is far more powerful than what you say about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I use these testimonials, and then I, um, I use them on my blog. I use them on social media. Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. When I was doing this um, uh, seven years ago, when I first started doing this seven years ago, LinkedIn was my preferred party. So I tend to think of Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and Instagram, and Pinterest, and all that as parties. So you don't have to be at every party. You only need to be at the party where your ideal clients are. So again, once you've got this, you know where to search, for, you know where to be for your clients. You find out where they are and then you go after them. So on LinkedIn, there was a bunch of groups uh, back in 2010 when I started. It's moved over to Facebook now. But there was a bunch of groups um, called the Champagne Lover Society or the Champagne Appreciation Society and all these geeky people who were into talking about champagne all day long. Well, I just went into those groups and I connected with the group owners and I said, you know, would you like to distribute my free guide? So my free guide is available on my website. My free guide is my own unique piece of content that I developed, which I developed that from the questions that people asked me when they came to the B&B. &B. And I also um, developed it from the questions that people ask on TripAdvisor as well. So what are the questions that you are being asked over and over again, that you're answering over and over again, by your potential clients and even your clients. What are the things that people want to know about most? And then you can turn that into a piece of free content and you use that to connect with more of these, with more of your ideal clients. 
You don't give away this free content for nothing. You have to make sure that you get the name and email address of everybody who downloads your free guide, your free report, your free top tips, um, the, the five things that making tax digital is going to, you know, is going to affect people. You know, the, 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 the six ways that you can use a video in your marketing six things you can do at home, three things you can do at home to look feel fabulous every day, you know, that kind of thing. Think about the, the, the questions. It's not about what you do, this free guide is not about what you do, it's about what the benefit is that people get from being connected to you, being your client. And so you must have an automated database um, in place to collect names and email addresses in exchange for your free report. So this, all... I did all this manually to begin with, and it was a nightmare. I got myself in the right pickle. So then I, then I automated it um, with a CRM system. Do you know what that is? Customer Relationship Management System. Yeah. So what that did is it automated three crucial systems in my business that every single business needs to have in place. Do you know what they are? The finance, the database, the database. Yeah, and the contact. Well, yes, the three crucial sales and marketing systems in place. Do you know what they are? Prospecting, selling, and servicing. Okay, so my, <laughs> let me say that a different way. So you need a system for attracting guests, mm -hmm. prospecting. Mm -hmm. You need a system for selling more to those customers. Yeah? Sales. Sales. And then you need a system for having those customers buy again. Servicing. <laughs> so I didn't invent these three systems, I wish I had, but they are the basic business foundational business systems that every business needs to have. So with me in my B&B, um, this was my um, guest attraction system here. This was my upselling system here. And this was my repeats and referrals system here. And it all... It all was all automated using my customer relationship management system so they automatically got these commands, these uh, action steps happened. So this whole thing just spiralled upwards into a six-figure B&B business with just four rooms. And no booking.com. No, <laughs> why would you want it if you can get it yourself? It's exactly. So this is what I teach. Mm -hmm. You don't need booking.com. So any <laughs> questions? The RM system, I know it anyway because I've already spoke to you. Yeah. It is. You use. The one I use? Yeah. Infusionsoft. It's like the Rolls Royce mm -hmm. of CRM systems for small business. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap, but it's really good. There are others. There's, there's a ton of others. I've tried most of them. <laughs> but I certainly recommend that. If you want to talk about Infusionsoft or a CRM system, and in fact you want to talk about any of this, then. By all means, I'll be happy to help. So, there you go. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.